Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read S5 5076 LSC's Adventures in Wonderland. Chapter 1 Down the Rabbit Hole. Alice was beginning to get very bored. She and her sisters were sitting under the trees. Her sister was reading, but Alice had nothing to do. Once or twice, she looked into her sister's book, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what's the use of a book, thus Alice, without pictures or conversations? She tried to think of something to do, but it was a hot day and she felt very sleepy and stupid. She was still sitting and thinking when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran past her. Past her. There was nothing really strange about seeing a rabbit. And Alice was not very surprised when the rabbit said, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. Perhaps it was a little strange, Alice thought later. But at the time she was not surprised. But then the rabbit took a watch out of its pocket, looked at it and hurried on. At once Alice jumped to her feet. I've never before seen a rabbit with either a pocket or a watch to take out of it, she thought. And she ran quickly across the field. After the rabbit, she did not stop to think. And when the rabbit ran down a large rabbit hole, Alice followed it immediately. After a while, after a little way, the rabbit hole suddenly went down. Deep into the ground, Alice could not stop herself falling. And down she went too. It was a very strange hole. Alice was falling very slowly and she had time to think and to look around her. She could see nothing below her because it was so dark. But when she looked at the sides of the hole, she could see cupboards and books and pictures on the walls. She had time to take things out of a cupboard, look at them, and then put them back in a cupboard lower down. While the Alice, after a fall like this, I can fall anyway. I can fall downstairs at home and I won't cry or say a word about it. Down, down, down. How far have I fallen now? Alice said aloud to herself, perhaps I'm near the center of the earth. Let me think, that's 4,000 miles down. Alice was very good at her school lessons and could remember a lot of things like this. Down, down, down. Would she ever stop falling? Alice was very nearly asleep. When suddenly she was sitting on the ground, quickly she jumped to her feet, looked around. She could see the white rabbit who was hurrying away and still talking to himself. My ears and whiskers, he was saying, how late it's getting. Alice ran after him like the wind. She was getting very near him when he suddenly turned the corner. Alice ran around the corner too and then stopped. She was now in a long dark room with doors all around the walls and she could not see the white rabbit anywhere. She tried to open the doors, but they were all locked. How will I ever get out again? She thought sadly that she saw a little glass table with three legs and on the top of it was a very small gold key. Alice quickly took the key and tried it in all the doors, but oh dear, Either the locks were too big or the key was too small, but she could not open any of the doors. And she saw another door, a door that was only 40 centimeters high. The little gold key unlocked this door easily. But of course, Alice could not get through it. Uh, she was too, much too big. So she lay on the floor and looked through the, the open door into a beautiful garden with green trees and bright flowers. Well, Alice was very unhappy. What a wonderful garden, she said to herself. I like to be out there, not in this dark room. Why can't I get smaller? It was already a very strange day and Alice was beginning to think that anything was possible. After a while, she locked the door again, got up and went back to the glass table. She put the key down and then she saw a little bottle on the table. I'm sure it wasn't here before, said Alice. Round the neck of the bottle was a piece of paper with the words, drink me, in large letters. When Alice was a careful girl, 
It can be dangerous to drink out of strange bottles, she said. What will it do to me? She drank a little bit, very slowly. The taste was very nice. Like chocolate and oranges and a hot sweet coffee. And very soon Alice finished the bottle. What a strange feeling, said Alice. I think I'm getting smaller and smaller every second. And she was, a few minutes later. She was only 25 centimeters high. Now she said happily, I can get through the little door into that beautiful garden. She ran at once to the door. When she got there, she remembered that the little gold key was back on the glass table. She ran back to the table for it. But of course, she was now much too small. There was a key high above her on top of the table. She tried very hard to climb up the table leg, but she could not do it. At last, tired and unhappy, Alice sat down on the floor and cried. But after a while, she spoke to herself angrily. Come now, she said. Stop crying at once. What's the use of crying? She was a strange child and often talked to herself like this. Soon she saw a little glass box near her on the floor. She opened it and found a very small cake with the words, eat me on it. Nothing could surprise Alice now. Well, I'll eat it. She said, if I get taller, I can take the key off the table. If I get smaller, I can get under the door. One way or another, I'll get into the garden. So it doesn't matter what happened. So she ate a bit of the cake and then put her hand on top of her head. Which way, which way, she asked herself a little afraid. Nothing happened. This was not really surprising. People don't usually get taller or shorter when they eat cake. But a lot of strange things were happening to Alice today. It would be very boring, she said, if nothing happened. So she went on eating and very soon the cake was just finished. Chapter 2. The Pool of Tears Curious, curiouser and curiouser, said Alice. She was very surprised and for a minute she forgot how to speak good English. I shall be as tall as a house in a minute, she said. Tried to look down at her feet and could only just see them. Goodbye, face, she called. Well, put on your shoes now, oh dear. What your face? I am talking. Just then her head. Hit the ceiling of the room. She was now about three meters high. Quickly, she took the little gold key from the table and hurried to the garden door. Poor Alice. She lay on the floor and looked into the garden with one eye. She could not even put her head through the door. She began to cry again. It went on crying and crying. The tears ran down her face. And soon there was a large pool of water all around her on the floor. Suddenly, she heard a voice and she stopped crying to listen. Oh, the Duchess, the Duchess, she'll be so angry. I'm late and she's waiting for me. Oh dear, oh dear. It was the white rabbit again. He was hurrying down the long room with some white gloves in one hand and a large fan in the other. Alice was afraid, but she needed help. She spoke in a quiet voice. Oh, please, sir. The rabbit jumped wildly, dropped the gloves and the fan and hurried away as fast as he could. Alice picked up the fan and the gloves. The room was very hot, so she began to fan herself while she talked. Oh dear, how strange everything is today. Did I change in the night? Am I a different person today? But if I'm a different person, then the next question is, who am I? Ah, that's the mystery. She began to feel very unhappy again, but then she looks down at her hand. She was wearing one of the rabbit's white gloves. How did I get it? How did I get it on my hand? She thought. Well, I'm getting smaller again. She looked round the room. I'm already less than a meter high. I'm getting smaller every second. How can I stop it? She saw the fan in her head, in her other hand, and quickly dropped it. She was now very, very small, and the little garden door was locked again. And the little gold key was lying on the glass table. Things are worse than ever, thought poor Alice. She turned away from the door and fell into salt water right up to her neck. 
At first, she thought it was the sea. But then she saw it was the pool of tears. Of tears. Crying makes a lot of tears when you're three meters high, tall. But why did I cry so much, said Alice. She swam around and looked for a way out. But the pool was very big. Just then, the she, just then she saw an animal in the water near her. It looked like a large animal to Alice, but it was on your mouth. Shall I speak to it? Thought Alice. Everything is very strange down here, so perhaps a mouse can talk. So she began, oh mouse, do you know the way out of this pool? I'm very tired of swimming, A oh, mouse. The mouse looked at her with its little eyes, but it said nothing. Perhaps it doesn't understand English, thought Alice. Perhaps it's a French mouse. So she began again and said in French, you, what is my cat? This was the first sentence in a French lesson book. Mouse jumped half out of the water and looked at her angrily. Oh, I'm sorry, cried Alice quickly. Of course, you don't like cats, do you? Like cats? cried the mouse in a high, angry voice. Does any, does any mouse like cats? Well, perhaps not, Alice began kindly, but the mouse was now swimming quickly away, and soon Alice was now alone again. At last she found her way out of the pool and sat down on the ground. She felt very lonely and unhappy. But after a while, the white rabbit camp came past again, looking for his white gloves and his fan. Uh, the Duchess, Duchess, oh my ears and whiskers, she cut my head off. I know she will. Oh, where did I drop my gloves? Then he saw Alice. Why, Marianne, what are you doing here? Run home at once and bring me some gloves and a fan. Quick now. Alice hurried away. But where is my, where is his house? She thought while she ran. Strangely, she was no longer in the long room with the little door, but outside in a wood. She ran and ran, but could not see a house anywhere. So she sat down under a flower to rest. That's end of the part one.